Uh, good evening, sir. Thanks for those nice words. Home, I am audible to all. Yes, sir. Audible. Yes, sir. So I thank the uh, Novartis team and the IMA Kodambakam for uh, having given me this opportunity. I owe my knowledge to my teachers, my patients, and my alma mater, the Madras Medical College. The slides are visible, sir. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the first slide is visible. That is yes. called your, your college building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just, just one second. You go to um, slideshow. That yes, is near sir. the cursor at the bottom. You hit that. Yeah, that button. Hit that. Yes, okay. Sir. So, uh, yeah, uh, axial spondyloarthritis more than just ankylosing spondylitis. So the, for the next 15 to 20 minutes, I will be discussing on the bird's eye view of the axial spondyloarthritis. So what is axial spondyloarthritis? As we know, the terminology itself says axial. Axial is the spine and the sacroiliac joints involvement. And spondylo is the spine and arthritis is anything that causes synovitis. We all know it's a chronic inflammatory disease with involvement of the axial spine, sometimes the peripheral joints and the enthesial places. Enthesis is like uh, we can see a patient with the Achilles enthesitis. Enthesis is a place where the tendon, the ligament or the capsule getting attached to the periosteum of the bone. It is the hallmark feature of a spondyloarthropathy. So the patients, apart from spondyloarthritis, can have extra articular manifestations, especially uh, uveitis. So the patient with a red eye, uveitis is one of the feature of uh, spondyloarthropathy. And psoriasis, we should always ask for the manifestation of skin, like psoriasis in a patient with spondyloarthropathy. Because psoriatic patients, 20% to 30% can have a particular manifestation. So it's a chronic inflammatory. Spondyloarthritis is a chronic inflammatory disease, which is debilitating and associated with deformities. So it has two components. One is a non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis, and the other is a radiographic axial spondyloarthritis. The radiographic is the one which we call it as ankylosing spondylitis. That is, when we say radiographic, it is standard uh, x-ray, standard radiograph, that is x-ray. When we say non-radiographic, it is the MRA, that is x-ray will be negative, but we'll be able to pick up the patient at an early stage. They are not two different entities. They are the two stages of the same disease. It's a continuum of disease. Uh, one thing very important is that not all patients with non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis will progress on to the ankylosing spondylitis. There is only a proportion of patients. So who are the proportion of patients I'll be discussing later. So just one sec. So MRA will be the early gold standard investigation for diagnosing a bone marrow edema in patients suspected to have sacroiliitis. So this will be the late stages where we can see erosions. This is a CT pelvis of a patient with ankylosing spondylitis where the structural lesions are seen. There are erosions on the iliac side of the border. And this is what we see typically in the end stage ankylospondylitis where there is fusion of the dorsal vertebrae. This is the syndesmophyte formation and the bamboo spine appearance. So as I told you, not all patients with non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis will progress on to ankylosing spondylitis. So who are the patients who are more prone? Gender. Uh, males are more prone to develop or progress on to ankylosing spondylitis, and especially patients with HLA B27. So HLA B27 positivity increases the chance of patient progressing on to the disease, and early the age of onset of the disease, more the chances the patient will progress further. Other risk factors include smoking and blue collar jobs, especially patients doing a manual labor. They the physical overactivity increases inflammation and those patients are prone to develop ankylosing or progress on to form a structural deformity. And the number of syndesmophytes at the first presentation will also decide on the futuristic progression of the disease. So as I told you, not all patients with 
non radiographic axial spar will develop a ankylosing spondylitis so we according to statistics 10 to 12% of the patients will develop ankylosing spondylitis in 2 years and approximately 60% will develop ankylosing spondylitis within 10 years so patients with back pain sacroiliitis on mri will develop on to radiographic axial spar that is x ray wise we can see the structural lesions and those patients can progress on to form syndesmophytes or the bony ankylosis where what we call it as ankylosing spondylitis so this statistics is uh, very alarming as we see that 70% of the patients will progress on to fusion of the spine over 10 to 15 years so as i told you uh, that bamboo spine or the uh, inability to flexion lumbar and dorsal flexion and extension will be affected by the syndesmophyte formation and they can have cessation of work around 10 to 12 years of age and this is very alarming statistics so not only the physical the patient not only experiences physical burden but also financial hello. as well as hello na na so uh hello can you hear me sir inda chilla ni you tripi pore parala hear you madam everyone everyone pore te na continuous madam we can hear you madam please continue yes sir uh, yes sir yes sir one is one chapati na one is one chapati So I request all the other members who are not a speaker to please mute yourself. So uh, this uh, axial spondyloarthritis not only causes a physical burden but also financial and emotional burden. So how how will we make a diagnosis of axial spondyloarthritis? So this was the initial classification, the New York classification for ankylosing spondylitis. This was based on X-ray standard radiograph, that is X-ray, where the patient will develop structural lesions on the sacroiliac joints, namely in the form of erosions or bony ankylosis. Uh, but later in 2009, we have got the assessment in ankylosing spondylitis classification criteria. So, what was the need for this criteria? so initially when the modified new york criteria was alone present we had only non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs and physiotherapy for patients with ankylosing spondylitis but with the invent of biologics namely the tnf alpha blockers and anti il17 the patients were the when we are able to catch the patient at early stage we are able to halt the progression of disease for that we need a better imaging to catch the patient at the early stage for that mri was the gold standard so we have two arms in this one is the imaging arm other is the clinical arm in the imaging arm we have to do mri as the uh, because for the x ray to show the structural changes it might take years so mri will pick up the bone marrow edema acute inflammatory changes mri is highly suggestive of sacroiliitis plus one of the spondyloarthritis features spondyloarthritis features so these are the spondyloarthritis features inflammatory back pain so what is inflammatory back pain any patient who presents with a uh, pain at the low back on getting up early in the morning and stiffness for at least half an hour duration so this is a inflammatory back pain the pain that will present on rest and it will relieve on exertion the entry criteria for this uh, uh, asas criteria is a patient should be less than 45 years of age and with the back pain of at least minimum 3 months duration so this is the entry criteria 45 years of age with less than uh, less than 45 years with more than 3 months of back pain with mri sorry so with the mri showing one of these spa features mri plus one of the spa features arthritis is peripheral arthritis enthesitis are already told you uveitis dactylitis dactylitis is sausage shaped toes either in the fingers or in the toes it's it can be associated with psoriasis or inflammatory bowel disease and a good response to non steroidal anti inflammatory family history of spondyloarthropathy and hla b27 positivity and elevated crp so this is the imaging arm of the criteria the other is the clinical arm where the hla p27 positivity will be there with two of the spondyloarthritis features when a patient presents with hla p27 positivity that is a 45 year old person with 
less than 45 year old with more than three months of back pain with HLA-B27 positivity and any of these two features, we should suspect a non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis. So this is what I've already told. This is just a complicated uh, picture of uh, algorithm of what I've already told. So any patient less than 45 years with more than three months of back pain with MRI suggesting of uh, sacroiliitis, that is bone marrow edema or HLA B27 positivity with any of these spondyloarthritis features, we should classify them having a non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis. So with so much of advancement, like with MRI, with uh, classification criteria being uh, modified, what is the delay uh, in diagnosing the axial spondyloarthropathy? Like uh, we have uh, the statistics, present day statistics show that an average delay of five to 14 years from the symptom onset to the diagnosis of axial spondyloarthritis. So what is the cause for the delay in diagnosing? One is imaging. So most of the times we do x-ray and if the x-ray is normal and if HLA B27 is norm negative and acute phase reactance, namely the ESR and CRP is normal, we don't consider taking a MRI. So any patient with, uh, suppose a patient presents with six months or one year durations, always better to do a MRI as an imaging modality to diagnose axial spondyloarthritis. And, uh, being chronic low back pain is a very common symptom in the population. So we always uh, deny, uh, as most of the times, kaikal kodachal, abdin solito, most of the times we just deny the symptom. And as I told you, CRP is uh, not a specific marker. CRP as well as uh, ESR is not a specific marker for axial spondyloarthritis. And not all patients are HLA B27 positive. So as I told you, HLA B27 negativity is not going to rule out axial spondyloarthritis. And we don't have a diagnostic criteria. What the criteria is a classification criteria. We classify the patients. Uh, we have to do the MRI and the uh, HLA B27 model on a suspected, clinically suspected patients. We have to classify the patient as having ankylosing uh, axial spondyloarthritis and the awareness among the healthcare workers about the axial spondyloarthritis is less. So this is the reason for delay in the diagnosing of axial spondyloarthritis. So what is the problem in delay? So if we, as I told you, if the patients are prone to progress onto the disease and if we are able to catch them at an early stage, we are able to intervene at a very early stage, then the irreversible structural damage can be prevented and this can be done by biologics. This will affect his work quality, quality of life will be affected and cost, of course, cost will be higher healthcare costs. So all these things will be affected if there is delay in the diagnosing of ankylosing uh, axial spondyloarthritis. So early intervention is a very important, uh, promising uh, uh, factor in diagnosing and giving the patient a better quality of life. So coming to the management of axial spondyloarthritis, way back uh, Balluvan has told that utran alagum, pini alagum, kalamum, katran karidichayam. So the, the patients, uh, uh, the quality of the patients, the disease load, the burden, and the timing and the duration is important for a doctor to treat the patient. Um, so what we uh, see now is like the non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis, NR, AXPA, and the ankylosing spondylitis, whether the treatment approach is different or the same. So when I say non-radiographic axial spa, it means X-ray is normal, but MRI shows bone marrow edema, osteitis, or capsulitis. Whereas ankylosing spondylitis is X-ray showing structural lesions. So they have the same burden, almost as they have the same burden, and treatment options are the same. And the latest recommended ACR updated uh, criteria and the guidelines say that both axial spondylo non-radiographic and radiographic axial spondyloarthritis, the treatment modality is the same. And uh, both the TNF alpha blockers and interleukin-17 can be given. The first primary or the first line therapy in axial spondyloarthritis are 
non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs and physiotherapy so this will be the first line of management and despite the patient getting the nsaid non steroidal anti inflammatory and the patient having high disease activity the next standard of care will be biologics so biologics what has been uh, approved for the treatment of axial spondyloarthritis are two groups one is a tnf alpha blockers the other is interleukin 17 inhibitors interleukin 17a inhibitors so both these are recommended both for non radiographic axial spondyloarthritis as well as ankylosing spondylitis for the tnf alpha blockers apart from the fourth drug sertolizumab we have other drugs available in india and interleukin 17 is secukunimab and this has been recently approved for non radiographic axial spondyloarthritis so whenever the patients fail to respond to a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug or they are having contraindications to tnf alpha blockers we can Uh, secukunimab is a only interleukin 17 inhibitor that has been approved in india for the treatment of axial spondyloarthritis spectrum uh, regarding the conventional dmars like this sulfa salicin methotrexate these conventional synthetic dmars do not have a role in axial involvement but the patient also has peripheral joint involvement like the appendicular joints like the shoulder or the knee these conventionalist dmars can be uh, disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs can be helpful but for the axial involvement conventional synthetic dmars do not have a role so as i told you this is the secukunimab is the anti il17 a inhibitor approved for the axial spondyloarthritis in india so let us just have a quick look through on the effect of secukunimab both as i told you both in the non radiographic axial spa and in ankylosing spondylitis improvement is seen very early even in the week uh, within a week 1 to 3 in cases of as2 non radiographic spa the efficacy is seen assas is the disease activity 20% improvement 40% improvement in biologically naive patients when we say naive patients they have not been tried with any other biologic before like no tnf was tried on these patients they are naive to the biologic treatment similarly the bath ankylosing spondylitis disease activity index they have a reduction in the overall disease activity and seen as early as 4 months duration and uh, also have this is functional improvement index bath ankylosing spondylitis functional improvement score so these patients have functional improvement almost 50% of the patients show functional improvement by the year of end of the year 1 in non radiographic and 5 in year, uh, ankylosing spondylitis and uh, quality of life also improves uh, both with non radiographic and ankylosing spondylitis the quality of life also improves us improves with secukunimab and very important is it has a very good rate of more than 60% of patient show remission in both the groups <clears throat> and uh, one important point or edge of anti il17 over tnf is it arrests the structural progression that is new bone formation is arrested in patients taking secukunimab rather than with tnf alpha blocker so this is very important point and 97% of the patients remain free of syndesmophyte at 2 years interval and safety with regard to safety there is no major concerns with the safety profile with concern to secukunimab that is anti il17 both in non radiographic group and the radiographic ankylosing spondylitis so whenever the management comes the first line will be the non steroidal anti inflammatory drug along with physiotherapy if the patient fail to respond to non steroidal with increased disease activity the biologics or the drug of choice in patients with axial spondyloarthritis both tnf alpha blockers and anti il17 inhibitors are helpful and anti il17 have a edge over tnf alpha blockers in preventing the radiographic progression especially the formation of new bone and it has a very favorable safety concern so the extract of this uh, talk is we have two new terminologies one is non radiographic axial spondyloarthritis that is nr axpa 
that means the mri showing bone marrow edema with x ray showing normal so a normal x ray in a patient with the inflammatory back pain does not rule out a axial spondyloarthritis we have to take mri to confirm this sacroiliitis then we say a radiographic axial spondyloarthropathy spondyloarthritis it means the patient has got structural lesions namely erosions sclerosis or new bone formation bony ankylosis which we call it as ankylosing spondylitis so whenever a patient presents with inflammatory back pain if not i mean not a chronic duration then mri will be the investigation of choice plus or minus a ct screening to exclude the structural lesions and early biologics will halt the disease progression so axpa axial spondyloarthritis has non radiographic and ankylosing spondylitis they are not two different entities they are the same continuous of one spectrum of disease there is a delay as i've told you 5 to 15 years has been the delay from the first onset of symptom to the diagnosis of the ankylosing spondylitis or axial spondyloarthritis the uh, why early diagnosis is important is we can arrest the progression of disease and new bone formation and give the patient a better quality of life if they are uh, ca caught at the very early stage and the disease is arrested with biologics and there is no different treatment plan in both non radiographic or radiographic axial spondyloarthritis so katrathu kaiman nalavu kallaadathu ulagalavu whatever little i have known i have shared it with you and thanks for the patient listening thank you so much thank you very much ma'am for that uh, uh, very nice talk um, are there any questions from the audience yes yes madam can i ask please sir please go ahead sir uh, ma'am thank you very much for that enlightening talk yes uh, sir regarding that mri changes in the sacroiliac joint yes sir uh, we can find only to the iliac side or if it is on both sides still it can be accepted as one of the criteria yes sir both sides are sacroiliitis it can be on both sides sacral edema as well as the iliac edema sir osteitis on both sides what is the dosage of uh, secukinimab madam and how what yes sir we have the induction one second what is approximate cost of uh, the drug also we would like to know yes sir so induction phase and maintenance phase we have so induction phase will be for uh, psoriatic arthritis will be a different dose so it will be 300 mg per week weekly once five doses followed by monthly once it is a subcutaneous for axial spondyloarthritis we give 150 mg per week and weekly once five doses followed by monthly once if the disease activity is high and the patient is not responding we might even increase to 300 mg even in a non psoriatic axial spondyloarthritis the cost of 150 mg will be around 18000 sir thank you madam there was another question in the chat box yes ma'am um it uh, the question is what is the difference between as and fish a uh, yes and dish ma'am uh, ankylosing spondylitis okay a uh, dish is it's a uh, interstitial it's a skeletal hyperostosis it is nothing to do with a degenerative spinal disease where there be flowing osteophytes more than three vertebra flowing osteophytes and uh, that will be entirely different from ankylosing spondylitis ankylosing spondylitis is a inflammatory disease that comes more on degenerative disease diffuse interstitial uh, 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 skeletal hyperostosis okay so i guess that those are um one second there's one more question i'll just take it for you um the importance of chest expansion in the diagnosis and prognosis from dr shalini okay so when the modified new york criteria was framed they included the chest expansion as one of the uh, features of the ankylosing spondylitis because the patients with ankylosing spondylitis can have costo vertebral and costo chondral involvement those are part of enthesial joints so when those joints are inflamed the costo vertebral and costo chondral joints are inflamed, uh, inflamed the patient can have limitation in chest expansion 
Thank you. Um, are there any more questions from the audience? 